Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Robitai. Today I'd like to cover the solar spectrum once again, this time in the context of the standard solar model. In a prior video, we covered the standard model in detail. Please make sure you watched it if you want to understand everything. In the standard model, hydrogen is said to be fused into helium in the sun's core, producing gamma and x-rays. Once these enter the radiative zone, they are absorbed, re-emitted, or scattered as they interact with free ions or electrons for thousands or millions of years. Why do scientists insist on this? If you remember hydrostatic equilibrium, the sun and large stars must have significant radiation pressure internally in order to somewhat counter the effect of gravity. If those terms are unfamiliar to you, I'll point you one last time to our video on the standard solar model. Mathematically, the standard model resembles an onion where each layer of the radiative zone is at a single temperature, which differs from that of the other layers. The standard model also insists that each layer has a different ability to absorb, reflect, or scatter photons at each frequency. This is known as frequency-dependent opacity. Opacity is important, but not complicated. It refers to a layer's ability to absorb, reflect, or scatter light. A fully opaque layer does not allow any light to pass. The standard model, of course, is concerned with the absorption and re-emission of light. Why? Because astrophysicists long ago inferred that each layer of the radiative zone could be treated as a black body. Not precisely, of course, since some of the photons eventually escape from the sun. Therefore, a little light energy must move from layer to layer. Still, the idea that each internal layer of the sun acted as a black body was accepted. This is exactly why we have a whole video on black body radiation and another one on Kirchhoff's law. Now black bodies can only absorb and emit light without transmission or reflection. For a black body, while all the possible processes involved have been considered, absorption and emission still constitute 100% of what is observed. Therefore, relative to black body radiation, absorptivity and emissivity are equal and constitutes the whole problem. Since all of the opacity must come from absorptivity for a black body, then it follows that the two are equal and have a value of one. This is where the model gets interesting. To account for the solar spectrum we measure at the photosphere, solar physicists claim that at each level within the radiative zone, the sun is able to generate a different black body spectrum. The maximal frequency of each layer, due to the unique temperature, elemental composition, and opacity, shifts to lower values as the light travels from the core to the photosphere, where the temperature of an individual layer is now at 5,700 Kelvin. In order to build all these perfect black body spectra, scientists are requiring that the opacity of each layer is naturally perfect to cause the needed change in thermal emission. To build this model in the laboratory, they measure the opacity of as many types of atoms and ions as possible under a variety of temperature and pressure conditions. They then input the data into supercomputers, which are given the task to come up with a composition for each layer that will provide the desired spectrum. An important note, the negative hydrogen ion becomes the key determinant of opacity at the level of the photosphere. This is a surprising model since negative hydrogen ions are extremely unstable and observed on Earth only in particle accelerators and in the upper atmosphere. Of course, the hydride anion does not account for the solar spectrum by itself. Many other ions, atoms, and free electrons must also be thrown into that mix. Surprisingly, the situation is even messier than this. Why? Because the opacity for each object changes at different frequencies. For example, a sheet of glass is completely transparent in the visual spectrum, as you may know, but you may be surprised to learn that it is opaque in the infrared. That is one of the reasons why greenhouses work. As a result, the standard model is so complicated that solar physicists simply calculate what is known as Roslin mean opacity for each layer. They just forget about the frequency-dependent terms altogether. 
Perhaps at this stage, you are thinking that an onion sun composed of opaque layers of gaseous plasma, which trap light for millions of years and whose spectrum can only be created by a supercomputer, sounds more like science fiction than science fact. If I said that this approach has no place in science, I would be making an understatement. Remember the Occam's razor video? You may recall Newton's statement. Therefore, to the same natural effect, we must as far as possible assign the same cause. In studying the opacity of isolated ions or atoms, scientists are analyzing specific processes which have nothing to do with blackbody radiation. Then they are taking these unrelated processes and saying, look at our supercomputer. It can make a blackbody spectrum using the sum of all these processes. Nature, however, works very differently in graphite. A blackbody spectrum is generated in one step using a single type of atom. Astrophysics is missing the obvious. For now, the main point is that the mechanism which the standard solar model uses to explain the solar spectrum has nothing at all to do with blackbody radiation and cannot be the correct answer. The fact that scientists wasted hundreds of millions of dollars on this model is embarrassing, but it's not a reason to keep chasing this faulty idea. I cover the solar opacity problem extensively in this paper, which you can read to learn more. Now, astrophysicists will claim that the particular mechanism used to produce a black body spectrum is irrelevant due to Kirchhoff's law. Remember, Kirchhoff insisted that the interior of opaque objects in thermal equilibrium always contains black body radiation. If the interior of the sun can be considered enclosed like a cavity, then according to Kirchhoff's law, it must contain black body radiation and can produce the solar spectrum. There are multiple reasons why Kirchhoff's law cannot be used on the sun. First, Kirchhoff's law requires opaque cavities to produce black body radiation. Imaginary onion layers are not sufficient. Planck himself made the point. And hence it follows that only material particles, not geometrical volumes or surfaces, can emit heat rays. Secondly, Kirchhoff's law is only valid in thermal equilibrium. So how do solar physicists consider the sun enclosed and in thermal equilibrium when it is in fact emitting lots of light at the level of the photosphere? The argument is based on the relationship advanced by Joseph Stefan, which is covered in this video. In 1879, Stefan demonstrated that the amount of light emitted by a black body is simply equal to a constant multiplied by the fourth power of the temperature. The Stefan-Boltzmann's constant in this equation is related to the amount of emitting surface in square meters. For an approximately spherical object like the Sun, the surface area equals 4 pi r squared. Substituting this into Stefan's law, we get the equation for a sphere. The luminosity of a spherical black body therefore depends only on the square of the radius and on the fourth power of the temperature. The other terms are all constants. Now let's return to the onion standard model of the sun, beginning with the core. The core has a radius of about one quarter of the total radius of the photosphere. We will assume that the outer core has a temperature of 10 million Kelvin and a temperature of 5,700 Kelvin will be assumed for the photosphere. Now we use the equation we made and plug in these temperatures. Then we cancel the constants since they are equal in both calculations. If it is appropriate to apply Stefan's law, we find that the outer solar core is producing nearly 600 billion times more light energy than is being released at the level of the photosphere. This is why solar physicists argue that the sun is operating as a slowly leaking sieve, and therefore it can be considered enclosed and in local thermal equilibrium. In fact, Stanley Eddington argued that the sun was a better example of a black body than anything ever found on Earth. I have a few problems with this argument. First, is it appropriate to apply Stefan's law inside the sun? After all, objects are known not to radiate at all internally. At the center of a gaseous sun, the densities become quite large, which favors thermal conduction, not radiation. The energy is likely to be dissipated in vibrations or phonons into the body of the sun. After all, solar physicists argue that vibrational energy does exist inside the sun, especially given that they themselves are performing helioseismic studies there. A second concern is the validity of Kirchhoff's law. 
That is, do all cavities actually contain black radiation? We covered the validity of Kirchhoff's law in this video. Spoiler alert! We showed that the law can be proven to be invalid in a single step. If you have not watched that video, give it a look. Finally, there is one other reason why Stefan's law can't be applied to the interior of the Sun. Look at this short clip from NASA. The Sun has internal convection currents. These currents ruin the concept of a stable onion layer inside the Sun. This is important because thermal equilibrium never exists in the presence of convection. And thermal equilibrium is required to apply Stefan's law. In every aspect, it was improper for solar physicists to argue that Stefan's law could be used to justify a gaseous model of the Sun. In the end, whether considering opacity arguments or Stefan's law, a simple analysis easily reveals that solar physics has no means of accounting for the solar spectrum in a gaseous model of the Sun. I hope that you liked this short video about the solar spectrum in the context of the standard solar model. If you did, please leave a like. In addition, subscribe to join me as we look more closely at the Sun, the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.